let's move forward and talk about Ave's go or go. But this is the new stable coin. I have no idea what is happening right there. But Ave, they just announced a proposal to the governance forum that they want to add a stable coin. I pulled up the price chart here. You can see that midday boom very nice spike if we go and zoom out i'm not going to go back all the way to a year let's let's just hit three months just to see a little bit you see a little bit of a bounce but still you know not really stopping uh this larger uh just downward pressure here but it would suggest that go would get burned when users pay back a loan it's going to operate similar to the dai dai stable coin uh dai does have uh where you have to pull in more than a dollar to receive a dollar i think some of those details are still pending but Similar process, not going to be algorithmic. It's going to be backed. It will be backed by, you know, their own reserves here. Just for some uh, people wondering, if you're not familiar with Aave, is a DeFi lending protocol. Uh, and I've, I was looking here, $5 billion in total value locked. Ben, we've talked about stable coins plenty of times and how the big players are going to essentially just choose, you know, it's going to be between Circle and Tether. Those are going to essentially going to be, you know, probably consolidating to the top. Ave has a lot of the same whales, a lot of the same circle wall, a lot of this, a lot of cross interactions with those two large platforms with Circle and Ave here. Is it possible that Ave has enough whale volume, enough whale action, enough of the large investors to succeed against those giant war chests? Well, I mean, I certainly would have told you that it did. I, I thought in the bull run this was going to be far and away the number one DeFi project, and then it just pulled back and pulled back and pulled back. And then we had our second renaissance of the bull run, you know, the back half of the year. Uh, it didn't get a resurgence and it never really recovered back to those prices, which once again, you know, hits the point that a lot of times when you see a coin overperform during a certain period of time, it is not likely to repeat that result. Um, so I, I think that when it comes to the big, you know, kind of the big DeFi projects we looked at last year um, or the year before as, you know, kind of the blue chippers were, you know, compound. Uh, obviously, Ave and then Maker. Uh, Maker, right? Maker. Maker has had a lot of issues. Um, you know, it it has fared pretty well in the in the recent you know stable coin uh, fiascos, so it's held pretty tight. But if you go back to the pandemic crash, you would see that it got unpegged. Um, and it was having a problem with liquidity. Uh, you look at Compound and, you know, the, the CEO of Compound says that, uh, you know, he basically there was a hack and uh, I can't remember exactly what it happened, but there was some kind of hack and he was basically threatening the docs, everybody on the platform to figure out who the hackers were. Something like that. If people remember when that happened, I think that would have been uh, maybe in like uh, September of last year, or maybe October, somewhere around there. Then you have Ave. Ave still seems to me to be like the best out of that bunch, I, I believe, but they've had a hard time proving that. So um, can Ave compete on a large scale? Yes, it can. Will it? That's still yet to be seen. And I think, you know, we, we do all have to take a, a giant step back and realize that DeFi as a whole has taken a big step back. And so due to all this stuff with the staking and the unpegging of the stable coins, it's, it's caused a lot of a, a rift of trust, a rift between users and trust when it comes to these platforms. So I, I can't say with very strong confidence that any specific DeFi platform is going to really take off at this point because of this, uh, you know, black eye on crypto.